Inshallah, we'll have a lecture today about women in Islam, and it's continued from last night, I believe. Um, Dr. Lisa Killinger will be giving the lecture. Uh, she is an American Muslim who embraced Islam as an Iowa State University student in 1979. Uh, she obtained her Doctor of Chiropractic degree in 1983 and practiced in California, where she, was, where she also worked as a teaching assistant for world religions classes at the University of California. Her popular lectures on women in Islam and Islam and universal peace were often attended by over 500 students. Ms. Killinger is currently a, a guest lecturer on Islamic topics in Davenport, Iowa, where she works as a chiropractor, researcher, and author. She is, mashallah, also the mother of four children. Please help me in welcoming her. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. If I just talk like this, will you hear it? No. I'll stay close to the microphone then. I really, I'm small, so I tend to disappear when I get behind here, but I'll try to behave and stay, stay where I'm told. Most of the time when somebody American like me comes up um, in front of a group who have been Muslim their whole lives, they ask, how did you get here? How did you embrace Islam? And um, I actually, as, as the sister mentioned, was here a student at Iowa State University, and I was eating in a special cafeteria that was for people with special diets. I happened to be vegetarian, which meant I was already a black sheep, if you can imagine, in the 1970s, in the Midwest, the pork belt, being a vegetarian. So I was eating in the, the special cafeteria. And um, some people there asked me, you know, what are you in for, as if it were a jail sentence. And I told them that I was there because I didn't eat meat. And I asked them what they were in for, and they said they didn't eat pork. So I was intrigued as to why, and I asked, you know why, and they told me they were Muslim. So I was curious, and this led to a bunch of discussions about politics, religion, and everything else you're not supposed to discuss over dinner. But um, one day they asked me what I believed in, what my faith was. And I told them that I believed in one God, certainly, and I respected the prophets, and I knew that the prophets all brought important messages, and it seemed to me that the message was all the same. But I didn't think that it was right to pray to any of these prophets. So I had been, I was actually a Sunday school teacher at the church across the street here on this campus um, in an Episcopalian church. And um, I was struggling with the fact that they were praying to really essentially Jesus and I had a hard time with this. So it wasn't making sense to me. And uh, so eventually I asked them, um, I, when I told them what my beliefs were, they told me, ah, she's Muslim. And I was so shocked. I was horrified, actually. I'd never really heard the word, and I didn't know anything about the faith of Islam. And I got very suspicious and skeptical and asked them, what is this, you know, Islam? And then I remembered, wait a minute, maybe we studied this in social studies class in high school. And all I could remember was that in the East, there were some foreign-looking people. They wore saris and dhotis, and they, they worshipped cows. So I asked them, do you worship cows? And they, <laughs> of course, laughed. Thank heavens, they weren't too offended. But this is the ignorance of being raised in the Midwest. We so often don't learn anything about Islam. And if we do, it's a paragraph in the social studies text often forgotten by the age of, uh, ripe old age of 19, where I was when I embraced Islam. So they told me um, about a little bit about Islam. I read some books. And now, in retrospect, I think, alhamdulillah, that I learned about Islam through the books, and I didn't uh, learn about it from really Muslims, per se, because I might have been extremely disappointed in the behavior of some Muslims. In fact, those Muslims that taught me about Islam, I embraced Islam the first day of Ramadan, 1979. And we fasted and prayed, and they taught me as best they could remember how to pray, et cetera, et cetera. And then after Ramadan ended, they weren't praying anymore. And I said, doesn't it say that you're supposed to pray five times a day? And they said, well, yeah. You know. So obviously, the people that brought me to Islam weren't perfect as far as their practice of the deen. But this is just maybe an example to let you know that you don't have to be a perfect Muslim to spread this deen to others and to bring people into Islam. Allah chooses whom he wills, and I feel honored to be here today. The circle has completed that I'm back here on the campus where I embraced Islam. I, at that time, I drove a motorcycle to Iowa State, which I think people found intriguing because when I wore hijab and wore the motorcycle helmet and took the helmet off, I was still wearing hijab and people found it quite unusual. 
but um, there's not too many Muslim women on motorcycles at the Iowa State campus, I think, to this day. Then I became a chiropractor in 83, um, married then later, after years of being Muslim, and uh, went, got an opportunity to go to the foothills of the Himalayas and uh, do some chiropractic practice in an area where no, they hadn't, the women there hadn't even seen a health professional of any sort during their life. So it was a big honor for me again to get to provide health care there near the Khyber Pass in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I got to um, go to London for a time, um, be introduced to the um, cat named Cat, Yusuf Islam, or Cat Stevens as people of my generation referred to him as. And um, I was very moved that another person was on the same kind of spiritual path from being a tree-hugging hippie like myself into Islam um, in the late 70s. Then I went to California and taught, as, as the sister mentioned, and um, Ustadji, who knows what that means here in the audience. I think some of you who are Pakistani know. Um, I had a great world religions teacher who was um, Pakistani, half Pakistani and half Irish, and he called himself Ustadji, and he was my teacher as well and allowed me to help um, new students learn about Islam. And now I'm home again, so the circle is, is complete. <laughs>